Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. Uh, today we're gonna take a look at Google Forms. So we've been taking a look at a lot of the Google apps and the, the things that we can use along with Google Classroom. So today we're gonna take a look at Google Forms and see what we can do in there. Uh, just to give you a little bit of a preview. So I am gonna show you how to actually set it up uh, in a quiz or a, a test format, some sort of assessment that you're going to give in your class. But obviously there's a, there's a ton of ways that you could use this. You could use this as uh, an exit ticket. You could use it as um, just a quick little review for kids. Um, you could even use it in you know quiz, uh, a game show type format um, instead of using it uh, as a, a formal assessment. So um, with that being said, as we go through this, you're probably, you're definitely going to see that there's, there's other ways that you could use this, but I'm just going to show you a couple quick ways that you could use this for, um, for assessments in your classroom. Um, so originally, uh, Google Forms was really set up um, by Google. It was more of like a survey. It was just to get information from people. But as, as teachers started using this, um, they started making some adjustments. Google started making some adjustments to make this a little more teacher friendly. Um, so we could make these and then share it right into our Google Classrooms. So uh, this is the uh, this is the official page right here. So it's um, you can go to forms.google.com um, or you could just type in forms on Google and it'll pop up for you. Um, so make sure that you're logged in uh, into your account. And uh, what we're going to do is this is the screen that comes up. So the, the things across the top here, you you probably wouldn't have on yours um, the stuff that you see on the bottom. So just on the top you would see, but down on the bottom here. Um, these are the ones that I have created, um, the ones that I've created. So um, with that being said, when, you, when you're new, when you haven't created any of these yet, you're going to go ahead to uh, blank. And this is the screen that pops up. So now that we're in here, you can actually start taking a look around. I'll give you a little tour of, of what it is that you can do in here. So uh, a lot of different options, but the first thing I'll do is I'm, today we're just going to go through, I'm just going to make a quick uh, fraction uh, quiz. Okay. All right. So now, um, now that I put that here, you'll notice that um, up here in the top, it pops up there as well. So it'll populate for you once you name your quiz. So you have a few different options here. Before I start actually putting questions in, before I start doing things, I'm going to show you uh, uh, what, what we have here. So uh, the little button that we have here, scroll down a little bit. So this right here is add a question. We have add a title and description, add an image. We can add a video or we can add a section. Okay, so you have a few different options there, and I'll, I'll talk about what those mean in just a couple of seconds. So up here in the top, you have um, some more options. So over here, you have your color palette, so you can go ahead and choose the color that you want. You can also add an image of your own. So if you want to add in something else um, as, as, a, um, as a color uh, theme, you could do that as well. Uh, right here is a preview button, so this would show you what the kids are going to be able to see on their end. And then there's a settings button, so there's a few different options in here. So this is where I'm going to start right now. So uh, when we look in here, we have the general settings, so collect email addresses. Now, because you're sharing this in Google Classroom or you're sharing it with your kids in, in another way, maybe you're just using Drive to do that, um, you don't need to collect their email addresses, but we will need to collect their names, which I'll explain in a second. Um, so in this situation, it says requires login. You're probably not going to see that there. This says restrict to Mr. Mall's Marketplace users. I just have that account set up. You, I'm going to take that off. Um, limit to one response. So if you want the kids only to be able to take this one time, you want to click that box. If you want to have them take it more than once, um, then they'll, you know, they'll, you can uncheck that as well. Um, it does say when I click that, respondents will be required to sign into Google, which they will be because the kids are going to be signed into their Google Classroom or their Drive account. Um, respondents can edit after submit and see summary and chart, uh, charts and text responses. So if you want them to see all of that at the end, you could click that box as well. So then there's the presentation. Uh, presentation, you have a couple of different things here. So show progress bar, shuffle your question order. So if you don't want all of the kids to get the same questions in the same order, you could click on that. And then there's a confirmation message here as well. So thanks for trying your hardest. Okay. Um, so you could put in anything you want there, but that's what's going to show up after the kids are finished taking their quiz or their whatever you're using this for. Uh, quizzes over here on the right. So this is a section that was actually just added uh, not long ago by Google because they saw that teachers were actually using this as an assessment piece or as quiz, as a quiz. So um, if you click on that, it doesn't automatically make this a quiz. So I would have to go ahead and I would have to uh, turn that on. Um, release your grade. So you can release the grade to the kids immediately after each submission. So after every one of the questions, they could see how they're doing. Or if you want, uh, I'll turn on later after manual review. So this means that I would have to take a look at all of that first um, and then give them give them their grade afterwards. So totally up to you. It could be self-grading and the kids could actually see it right away or 
you could have the, the grades not be uh, available for the kids until after you take a look at it. Uh, respondents can see missed questions, correct answers, and point values, so you could turn any or all of those on or off. It's totally up to you however you want to work that in your classroom. All right, so I'm going to go back over here, and I'm just going to make sure that I am good to go. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do save. All right, so now the form description. So I'll just, uh, just put in something general here. I'm just going to say uh, for each of the questions, answer to the best of your ability. Okay, all right, so something along those lines. You don't have to put anything there if you don't want to. Um, but if you just want to give the kids a little boost, you could do that too. You could um, just, if you're going to explain uh, if there are specific directions, you could put that in there. Um, that shows up at the top of every one of the students' um, uh, assessments or the quiz that you're giving. Okay, so it does say email address in here. I guess I, I left that on. Um, they can put their email address in if they have one. Um, if they have a Google account, if they have a Google Classroom, then they, they probably have this email address anyway. So they can go ahead and type that in there. Um, the other thing, uh, actually, you know what, let me change that. So I'm going to actually say that I'm not going to ask for their email address. Okay, so now I have both of these. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do here is this unsolved question. I'm going to put name. This just makes it easy. So let me kind of explain where this goes. So all of this information that you're collecting here, you could do a couple of different things with it. First of all, you could get a um, you could get a um, a report after you're finished that shows it's very much set up like a quiz. You can see what what the kids got right, what they got wrong. Um, it makes it a lot easier if you put the name at the very top here, just so you can see that. The other thing that you could do with this is it could go right into an Excel spreadsheet. And if the name isn't there, then you have no way of knowing which order the kids or which data is in there. Um, that's um, that you're going to be able to see in that Excel sheet. So you want to make sure I would highly suggest put the name in the very top. Okay, so you have a few different uh, a few different options here. So the first thing I'm going to put name and then over here on the right hand side, it says uh, you can click this little drop down and it's going to give you a few different options here. So there's short answer paragraph and then there's a bunch of other uh, things here as well. So because is this is a name, I'm just putting in my name, uh, or I'm going to have the kids put in their name, I am going to do short answer because it's nothing. It's just going to make that box a little smaller so it's nothing major for the kids to have to fill in. All right, so a couple of things here. So the answer key is right down here on the bottom. Obviously, this is, this is not graded. This is not a question so uh, that I'm going to give points for, so I'll just leave it at zero. And let's see, I'm going to jump back over here. All right, so that's all set. So uh, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to push required. So the kids uh, are forced to put their name on their paper, uh, which we know is always an issue. Anyways, so uh, we'll go ahead and push required. And that sets up my first question. Now you can kind of see this like outline around here. That is a question. Notice these little dots right here. I can actually move this around. Once I have other questions in there, I can move the questions around in different orders if I want to as well. Okay, so I'm going to leave that there because I want name to be first. So there's this little button right down here. It says duplicate. So I'm going to go ahead and click on duplicate. And notice that it puts it underneath here. Now, like I was just saying, you can move things around if you want to. I'm going to leave name at the top, but you can move questions around just like this by clicking on those little dots. All right, so the next question I am going to do a, uh, let's see here. So I'm going to, actually, I'm going to insert a picture here. So I'm going to push picture. And I'm going to jump over. Uh, I'm going to upload a picture. I have a few fraction picture saved on my desktop here. So I'm just going to jump over and grab one of those. All right, so let's start with this one. So I'm going to upload this picture. Um, you can find, you know, find these pictures online if you want to. Um, you can find them in different places. I mean, if you know, there are some math websites where you can find some uh, clip art like this as well. All right, so it is pretty large. I could probably um, make that a little smaller, but you know what? I'll leave it the way it is. Um, it fits on my screen, so that's good. So I'll say first, um, what fraction is shown below. All right, so now you have a couple of options here. So if you scroll down, I am going to make this, uh, let's make this one multiple choice. Um, and that's already selected, so I'm gonna scroll down. Um, for this one, it is uh, two thirds. So I'm going to say two thirds. You can add another option. I'll go ahead and I'll say, uh, let's say one third. Oh, I'm not sure why that's not selecting there. Let's see here. There we go, okay. So two thirds, I'll say one third. Um, we'll also say um, zero thirds, okay. All right, and then uh, the kids are forced to select one of those. So it's multiple choice. Um, those are the three options that I'm going to give the kids. I'm going to say the answer key 
And the answer key in this situation was it is two thirds was the correct answer. And then to go back to the question, I push edit question. So now you can see here on the teacher end of things, it says two thirds and then notice the little green uh, check mark over here saying that that is the correct answer. Um, we also need to assign this a, um, a point value. So we'll say that each question is going to be worth two points. That sounds good. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and we are all finished with that one. Okay, so that is uh, question number one. It's all finished. We have our uh, picture in there. We have our multiple choice answers and we also have our correct, um, correct answer selected and the point value. So we're good to go there. Um, I'll go ahead and I'll duplicate duplicate that. So now let's pick a different picture. And I'll go with, uh, let's go with, let's go with just this fraction, the 10 tenths. Okay. All right. So there we go. So I'll say, um, what is the top number in a fraction called? Okay. So I'm going to Go down a little bit and let's see, I'm going to do um, numerator or denominator. And I'm going to get rid of this one because we don't need that anymore. So I'm just going to push, uh, push this little button. Now, um, you could mix these up, obviously, if you wanted to. And notice that you can move them around if you want. So you can actually just drag them. And it retains the, um, the correct answer uh, wherever it was. So numerator, uh, we're all set there. I'm going to keep this at two points and we're set. So I'm going to duplicate this and I can continue adding questions. So let's do, uh, let's do one more. So let's say, what is the bottom number in a fraction called? And I'm actually going to, um, let's remove the picture from this one because I don't think I need it actually to do that. So numerator, denominator, I'm going to do the answer key, uh, select denominator. Now notice you can select more than one answer at a time. So you wanna be very careful there. Uh, so I'm going to deselect this or unselect it and uh, add a question, keep it at two points and it is required. So we're good to go there. All right. So I think you kind of get the point here. You can add in a few different things, um, a few different types of questions. Uh, one of the things that I will do here is I am just going to head down and I'm just going to show you here. So if you want to add a question, you push this, bu this button. Uh, this one, it adds a title and description. So it's not a, a question. It's just going to add in uh, some sort of information. So if you're you're switching over to a different type of question, maybe you're going to start doing some short answer questions. Maybe you want to give the kids a little bit of information about that. Just say, uh, you know, for these questions, you need to write an answer and they need to be at least three sentences long or something along those lines. Okay. Um, the picture. So if you add the image here, it just adds an image. It's not a question that goes along with it. Like I showed you, if you want to add a, uh, a picture within the question, you click the little button right here. Notice that it doesn't show up until you kind of hover over it, okay? So if I click off of it, it goes away. But if I go back over top of it, it's right there, okay? Um, if you want to add a video, you can do that or add a section. A section is um, kind of a, a, a good way to chunk questions. So if maybe you have some kids in your classroom, even if you have, um, I know on a lot of IEPs that we, we're, that we put on there that they're supposed to be chunked questions or chunked quizzes or tests. This is a great way to do that because it puts it on a completely different page. So instead of having all of the questions on one page like this and the kids have to scroll down, there's a next button and then the next question would be on the next page if you add a section in there, okay? All right, so obviously we would add a lot more to this quiz, but I think that's good for now. So uh, to share this, actually, let me show you what it would look like on the student's end. Let's change the, let's go ahead and change the, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and change the theme as well. So let me show you how I got there. So changing the theme, I can go here and then I can click the little picture. There's a bunch of themes in here. So I'm gonna say work in school. I don't know if there's really a, a math one in here. I can't remember if there is, let's see here. Yeah, you know what, we'll go ahead and we'll select just a kind of a cool one. Let's do, um, yeah, let's do the, let's do the frog. Okay, so I'm gonna select that and notice that it puts it up on the top for me. If you want, you could create that yourself and put it up there and put, you know, fraction quiz up there. Although you don't really need to because it says your title here already. All right, so we have that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the, the preview. And this is what the students would see on their end of things. Okay, so they would see um, it's a little more plain. There's nothing up at the top over here. Um, this edit button is just for me. Um, that's just for the teacher. So if the students, have, uh, the students are looking at this, they wouldn't have that because they're not able to edit this form. So notice I scroll down and you're going to put in your, uh, put in your information here. 
select the right answers. And notice that there's a little red, uh, the asterisk here, that means that it is required. So the kids have to answer those. They wouldn't be able to submit it until they, uh, until they do answer those. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to select those, submit, and then this is what they would see at the end. Okay. Now notice so over here, this is on my page again. Um, it says responses one. So I can click there. And it gives me three different options here as far as the results that I see. So I could see the summary, which is just a general overview of all of the kids. Um, it does show down at the bottom who, you know, who did it. It shows each one of the questions. So it's a nice little item analysis if that's something that you're looking for. Um, you also have the question. So I can click on question and it shows me uh, each one of the questions. And then also the individual, uh, individual um, quizzes as well. Now it was out of six points. Um, and the score, it says, is not released. And I think that's because I, I didn't push the one uh, button saying that it was going to be graded automatically. So I probably should go back and do that. You know what? Let's do that now. So I'm just going to go back over here. I think it was in quizzes. And I'll say immediately after submission. I'm not sure if that's going to change this one for me. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, you know what? Because I did it, I, I had that setting done before. Um, anything that comes in after that will work, but right now I, that's the way it is. So um, the other thing that you can do over here is you can create a spreadsheet. So if you want all of the data, all of the student data in a spreadsheet, I could click on that. It's going to say, hey, where do you want this new spreadsheet? Um, so you could do uh, put the information in, in, in a spreadsheet that you already have, or I could do it in a brand new spreadsheet. So I'm going to do that, and this is fraction quiz responses. I'll do create. And notice that it puts it over here, okay? So it's uh, it shows me, um, it does not show me the final grade here because remember, I should have selected, I should have made that selection before saying to automatically grade it. Um, this was manually grading. So you, you definitely don't want to do that. And to show you one more time how to not do it, <laughs> you're going to go to settings and then make sure that we go to quizzes and then uh, release the grade. You're going to release it immediately after each submission. So you're, you're after each one of the kids submits this, the grades are going to be done automatically. Okay, so instead of doing later after manual review, if you do this one, then I have to actually put in the grades and look at them. Okay, so you want to make sure that you do uh, immediately. All right, so again, uh, just go back over here. So it shows you um, the time and the date the kids did it, the score, and my name, and then um, all of the information over here as well, all of the questions as well. So you can see what each one of the kids answered. Okay. All right, so that is basically what I would do in, um, that's what I would do in a Google form, how I would use this. Obviously, a lot of different ways that we could use this, but this is one way that um, you can make quizzes and assessments. Now, I will just uh, share one more thing before we end here. Um, if I go ahead over to these little, uh, little dot, dot, dot over here, I have a few different options, okay? So I can make a copy of it. I can move to trash, print it. I can add collaborator. So if you're uh, looking to share this with your um, maybe, you know, you have a, another teacher that you, you co-teach with or something along those lines or your grade level, you could go ahead and do that. Um, the other thing that I'll show you here is if we do the send button, um, this is how you're going to get it to the kids. So you have a couple of different options here. Um, what I would highly suggest is um, if you go over to this link, uh, you can grab the link here and you could take this into uh, Google Classroom and share it that way. Now, remember that if you if you have this in your Google Drive, if you go to Google Classroom, um, you're going to be able to share anything from your Google Drive in there. So that's an option as well. But if you're looking to send this out, if you're looking to send it out to, uh, you know, to students, um, maybe that's how you're, you know, you're getting this, this, this quiz to kids. You could go ahead and you could um, either send via email, uh, buy a link, or if you want to embed this on your website. So if you have a website and you want to share this, if you want to embed it there, you could do that as well. The only thing that is it's a little more open, it's a little more free. So you have to be careful with that, and then anybody would be able to take it. So um, I would highly suggest if you have Google Classroom, that's going to be the best way to get this to your kids. Okay. All right. Well, if you have any questions, please let me know. I hope this was helpful, and um, we'll do uh, we'll do some more Google trainings in the future. Um, but uh, but I hope you got a few ideas that you can use in your classroom. Thanks for stopping by.